نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه ومختاره من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك وزيد وأنعم وتحنن وتكرم وترحم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد إخوتي في الله يقول رب العزة تبارك وتعالى في قرآنه المجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون All gratitude belongs to Allah We thank him with whatever few words we have to thank him We seek his help because we of ourselves are helpless Whoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. Whoever is led astray as a result of their own intentions, none can guide but Allah. And I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. And that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his last and his final messenger. And I remind you with that verse that we repeat every single Friday. That reminder that repeatedly comes from above, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believers, if you claim to be believers, be conscious of Allah as he deserves and make sure you do not die except upon a state of submission to him. An ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an 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 nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la tazulu qadama abdin yawm al-qiyamati hatta yus'ala an arba'in an umurihi fima afnah wa an shababihi fima ablah wa an malihi min ayna aktasabah وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَهُ وَمَاذَا عَمِلَ فِيمَا عَلِمُ We enter into the long-awaited summer holidays. Children leave their schools looking forward to six weeks of sunshine, not very much sunshine perhaps in this country. Parents looking forward to planning what to do, what it is they should do with their children with the six weeks they have ahead. And many of us not realizing that actually the six weeks ahead are such a great opportunity for families, for parents, for children all along. We are in the month of Dhul Hijjah, the month in which we try to remember and recollect the way of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, our father, our grandfather, the father of the prophets. And it is in this light that we should reflect carefully as to how would Ibrahim alayhi salam spend his summer holiday? How would he spend the coming six weeks, the coming eight weeks as a father, as a son, as a child, or as a parent. Let us start with Ibrahim alayhi salam as a child, as a son, as a boy. And we have so many youngsters today who are around us who are listening to this reminder. And even if you are up to the age of 40, you are still considered young, as per the Arabic linguistics, uh, the Arabic linguists who would say that shab, the youth in, in Arabic, refers to somebody under the age of 40. But really, it is not really an age, it is an attitude. Ibrahim alayhi salam as a young man. And if you look around at the world around us, what do young people do in the summer holidays? Look around in your own homes, look around in your own rooms, ask your neighbors, what do their children do in the summer holidays? The average person between the age of 6 and 18 spends six and a half hours a day looking at a screen in the summer holidays. If you ask those of us who were around in the 90s and the 80s, before screens were such a thing, you'd hear the chatter and the noise of children playing outside on the streets, running around, making a mess, playing, having fun. That is what would characterize the summer holidays. You'd wake up to the sound of children outside. And today, there is no sound of children outside, only the sound of shooting and games on a screen while a child's eyes glaze over watching that screen for hours and hours on end. Who is to blame for the killing of childhood that occurs in our homes as we leave our children and don't guide them? Who is to blame? It is us, the parents. It is us, the families, the societies who don't engage these children and who leave them unrestricted, 
with all forms of screens and entertainments so that they never look at the outside world and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created to offer them. Ibrahim alayhi salam as a child, well before the advent of screens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him. وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ As a young boy, Ibrahim a.s. is curious about the world outside. He wants to know who made the heavens and the mountains. Why is it that the sky stretches endless with no cracks in its center? He goes, he explores, he climbs, he sees, he watches, he discovers. Until he reaches a conclusion. This young child reaches a conclusion that there is nothing that could put all of this together outside except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a divine creator. Children underestimate themselves. There was once a very young companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the day the Prophet ﷺ passed away, this young boy was just 11 years old. Today, an 11-year-old boy would be playing a computer game. And as he was playing outside with his friends, one of his friends said to him, or rather he said to his friend, the Prophet ﷺ is dead, he has passed away. Let us go and learn from his companions what he taught so we can be useful. And his friend said, who needs us? We are just kids, let us play. This young boy didn't like that answer. He didn't like the idea that children are useless. They are of no value. And so he turned away from his friends and he walked straight to the companion of the Prophet wasallam, Anas ibn Malik, and he sat outside his door in the sandstorm of the desert of Mecca. This young boy at the age of 11 eventually becomes one of the greatest scholars in the history of Islam. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. But the story began when he was young. The story began in the summer holidays when his friends were playing, but he had a vision. He had a thought, an idea. I'm not going to waste my time. In the hadith I mentioned in the beginning of this khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ informs us that all of us, children and adults alike, that we will not move our feet on the day of judgment until we are asked about four things. We will not move from our positions. We will be asked about our time and how we spent it. And we will be asked about our youth, our younger years and what we did with those young years. And so Ibrahim salam shows us that young people should be in the outdoors, that young people should be exploring should be aspiring to something greater than themselves. It is this young boy, Ibrahim alayhi salam, this very young child who everybody underestimates, he is the one who breaks the idols. And when they find out, his people find out that the idols have been shattered and smashed, who is it that would have the courage to do such a deed? قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا يَذْكُرُهُمْ يُقَالُ لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ they said, we heard it was a little boy, a young boy, whose name was Ibrahim. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. When this verse was recited to him, he says, مَا بُعِثَ نَبِيٌ إِلَّا بُعِثَ شَابًا وَلَا أُوْتِيَ الْعِلْمُ عَالِمًا إِلَّا كَانَ شَابًا Every prophet started out young, and every scholar started out young. These are the years. These are the days that when our hair is gray, and when we are old, and when we have lower back problems, and when our knees will not bend, we will regret the way we spent the days we had strength, the days we had time, the days we had energy, the days we had sunlight. And it is this very idea, the idea of making use of our time, is that that is what we will be asked about on the day of judgment. We know that Ibrahim salam is just a young boy when he smashes the idols. He does not underestimate his abilities. He realizes, though I may be young, I can shake the very foundations of this city. He confronts his father. He's thrown into a fire. He gives da'wah to his people and he asks them to look at the sun and the moon and the stars. Whenever the sun sets, he says, look, that, 
sets? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can f- rise and set, can go up and down? He questions his people. He's intelligent. He's thinking. He's asking. He's searching. And this is what we ask of those who are young around us. Stop staring at the screen. Because verily and eventually, these eyeballs that you stare at the screen with will not be able to appreciate the creation of Allah. And that message goes for those of us who are old as well as those of us who are young. How many hours a day in this beautiful weather In this lovely holiday season, do we spend alone on our devices? Go out as a family, plan a visit to the dales, to the mountains, to the nature, to the beautiful areas, the parks. Be active, go out as a family, learn, read together, stay away from the screens. If there's one thing you take away as your objective for this summer holiday, let that be the objective. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيفوز المستغفر الحمد لله على إنعامه وشكر له لتفضله وفضله ومننه وامتنانه وسبحان الله والحمد لله تعظيما لشأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين. We talked about Ibrahim عليه السلام as a youth, as a young boy, as someone that nobody paid attention to. And look at the impact he made in the world today. Everybody in this room goes to Mecca and follows the footsteps of Ibrahim عليه السلام. But there was a time he was not a great prophet. There was a time he was a nobody, a child. But as a child, look at the impact he had. Do not underestimate your abilities as somebody who is young. Let us flip the script now. Script now. What would Ibrahim alayhi salam do as a parent in the summer holidays? How would he be if he was in you, your or my place? And he had children returning from school with six months or six weeks rather of free time. When we look at Ibrahim alayhi salam as a father, there is one passage of the Quran that tells us, that gives us guidance in this regard. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he returns to Mecca where he has left his son and his wife Hajar. And it is at this point in time Allah instructs him with a very big construction project. The Kaaba, its foundations exist. The brickwork exists. But someone needs to build it up. Someone needs to rise its foundations. Someone needs to make it the structure that we know today. Baytullah, the house of Allah. And who is given this task? The Prophet Ibrahim Now we know when we go to Mecca and we look at Maqam Ibrahim and we see the size of his feet. This is, this is not the size, the, the feet of a normal man whose height is six foot two inches. No, this man was much, much larger, much, much stronger, far greater than you and I can imagine. His head may have exceeded the ceiling of this masjid. And so when Allah gives him the task to build the Kaaba, He is more than capable of doing it by himself. He doesn't need a sidekick. He doesn't need someone to do the plastering for him. He doesn't need a joiner or a decorator. By himself, this man is able to do this task. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs him to do this, he realizes the best way to teach a child is not by talking to them, by doing something with them. One day I was giving a khutbah in a masjid and a camera was perched at the top of the pillar right across my face. And every time a man walked past this camera, he would bend his head so that his face wouldn't come in the way of the camera. And afterwards I saw a three-year-old boy walk past the pillar. And even though the camera was meters above his head, he bent his head as he walked past. Because children do not listen, they imitate. 
And when Ibrahim alayhi salam is supposed to build this Kaaba, he ropes his son Ismail to come and stand next to him. This small child, who can't even carry a brick, this small child who doesn't know how to do plastering or joining or building, but Ibrahim alayhi salam brings him along. And Allah records this in the Quran. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ And remember, when Ibrahim alayhi salam begins to build the foundations of the house, وَإِسْمَعِيلُ And grammatically, Ismail's name should have come much, much earlier. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ Why did Allah delay his name? Allah says, when Ibrahim built the house and Ismail. Because Ismail alayhi salam was practically useless. He was helping, he was a child, he was not mature, he was not an adult, he was not strong, he was not skilled. But Ibrahim alayhi salam builds, brings him there because this project is going to build this child. He's going to learn by watching his father. And he watches his father. He watches his father sweat as he serves Allah. He watches his father bleed as he serves Allah. He watches his father give up his time and his effort to serve Allah. What is this child learning? He's learning that one day he too will serve Allah like his father. And when the deed is done and the house is built and the structure stands tall and nothing can break the structure, the job is not done. Because this is where Ibrahim salam lifts his hands to Allah and he teaches his son something even greater. It is not about the height of the Kaaba or the strength of the bricks or the quality of the plaster. It is about Allah accepting this humble deed that we did. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And he pleads, he begs Allah, O oh Allah, accept this deed from me. You are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. And here he is teaching his son, who is Allah? The one I'm calling, the one I'm serving, the one I'm sweating for, who is he? He is السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ He teaches his son about the names of Allah. And he doesn't stop. Ibrahim salam continues to ask Allah, to plead him, to beg him. He teaches his son how to speak to your creator, how to speak to Allah. He asks Allah, رَبِّ إِنِّي أَسْكَلْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ Oh Allah, I left my family in this empty land next to your house. رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ He doesn't ask Allah for food or survival or water. If you left your child in a desert, the first thing you would ask Allah, Oh Allah, make sure they hydrate themselves. His first request to Allah, Oh Allah, make them pray salah. He teaches his children priorities. Salah comes before water and food. And he asks Allah something very strange. رَبِّ جُنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَن نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ Oh Allah, protect me and my children from worshipping idols. Imagine, this is the man that shattered idols with his hands. This is the father of Tawheed. He's asking Allah to protect him from worshipping idols. How? Why? He's teaching his son here something else. You are never safe from the shaitan. You are never safe, be you a prophet or the son of a prophet. Any moment in time, you can fall into shirk. You can fall into sin. Without speaking a word to his son, he is teaching him volumes and volumes. He is a school in himself. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. He is an ummah. He is a nation. He is a teacher. He is the professor. Without speaking a word to his son, he is teaching him how to serve Allah and sweat for his sake. He is teaching him how to speak to Allah. He's teaching him how to make dua that Allah accepts your actions because none of it matters if he doesn't accept. He's teaching his son priorities. He's teaching his son to prefer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to himself. He's teaching his children's gratitude and all of this. All of this without even speaking a word to his children. So pick a project. If you are a parent, pick a project. Whether it's a Lego tower or whether it is something to do with the Quran or reading the lives of the Prophet's companions, or building a model of the Kaaba at home or something else, pick a project with your children and do it with them. Take them with you on your outgoings and your incomings. Teach them as you walk the walk, 
Don't just talk to them the talk. This is the fatherhood of our father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyyati. Every one of you is a shepherd and you are responsible for your flock. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in an ayah that is terrifying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Believers, protect yourselves and your families from the fire. This fire whose fuel is pus and stones. This summer, the past few days, we experienced a little bit of heat. And all of us sweated and all of us complained and we all whined and we made posts on social media. But there is a fire whose, feet is, whose heat is far more destructive, far more painful, far more tormenting. And we will face that fire on a day where we want nothing to do with our wives and our children, our spouses and our children. Every man will run from his brother. And you will run from your parents. And your spouse and your own children. Everybody on that day will be too busy for their family. But parents, how many of us today are too busy for our families? How many of us today have no time for our children? There will come a day where we will want to throw our own children and run away from them. We're too busy. But that day is not today. Today is the day to build. Today is the day to spend time with them. Today is the day to plant the seed and water the plant, to teach them taqwa, to teach them salah, to make them love you. Because if they love you, then you can teach them to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not underestimate your responsibility as a parent just as we told the children in the first khutbah not to underestimate their responsibility as children our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam when his daughter fatima radiyallahu anha would walk into the room he would stand up and kiss her on the forehead he would play with them run with them race with them Teach them, talk to them, befriend them. And all of us, we live in a society where the moment we walk out the safe four walls of this masjid, we know what our children are going to face. We know what's out there. We know about the temptations out there. We know about the addictions out there. We know about the dangers out there. And the very minimum that we can do is give them a happy home so that they don't go outside looking for something else to make them happy. In the last three years, I have talked to over 50 young Muslims who have left Islam. And them or their parents get in touch with me. Sheikh, can you please speak to my son? He has doubts, he's about to leave. Sheikh, my son has an addiction, drug addiction. Can you speak? After speaking to so many of them, I reached a conclusion. The next time I received a message from a parent, I called the parent, uncle, auntie. In a 30 minute coffee session, I cannot fix 18 years of bad parenting. No madrasa teacher, no sheikh, no counselor can replace the role of a parent in the home. My heart breaks for these youngsters, but my heart breaks even more for the parents who will be stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who will be asked, they were your children. You had six weeks. What did you plan for them? Allahumma ghfir al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat, wal-Mu'mina wal-Mu'minat, al-Ahya minhum wal-Amwat. Inna ka Rabbana Samiyun Qaribun Mujibu al-Dawat. Ibad Allah. Uzkur Allah al-Azim ya Uzkurkum. Washkuruhu ala ni'amhi ya Zidkum. Wa tubu ilayhi ya tub alaykum. Wa lazikr Allah hi akbar. Allahu a'na bima tasnoon. Aqumu ila salatikum yarhamukum Allah. Allah.
الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على سلاح حي على الفلاح قد قام لصلاة قد قام لصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Still, close the gaps. If you're on the right side, move towards the left. If you're on the left side, move towards the right. أتيموا الصفوف حالوا بين المناكب والأقدام. لا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر فكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله